Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hang out with a couple nerds. I'm Ted. And I'm Ryan. And today we have a GM911 from Robert Bigler. This Goliath is so not meta! If you have a GM911, you can submit it to nerdarchy at gmail.com or head over to the GM911 section of our forums. All right, so here's the deal. Robert Bigler, uh, he, he put it in the comments on one of our videos. He's got a GM911. He's got a uh, Paladin Goliath who does not want to wear armor, heavy armor, because he wants to stay with the uh, the more natural, traditional ways of the he, Goliath He wants people. to be more Goliath. More Goliath than Goliath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, so he wants to wear leather or hide armor, and he's like... So he wants to be more the like primitive mountain man, like you know, like you don't really see a lot of people climbing the sides of mountains that are all decked in plain armor. And plain armor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I respect this is my that. mountain climbing plate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I respect that choice. It's very cool, but the the player of this character did make other choices, right? They chose how they were going to place the sets, and like a lot of people like forget that. Uh, though, also worth noting, it's. A typical paladin, high strength, low dex. Right, right. Like the, how you would array the paladin who would be otherwise wearing light plate mail armor. Yes. But so here's the thing, though. Um, a lot of people, you know, default to using the standard array, but there's tons of other options if you're using the standard point buy that you could have a stat array that's like three fourteens and three tens or whatever. So maybe the player wasn't thinking about using not the standard array, but that was a choice to use the standard array, essentially. It was a choice to place your lowest game statistic in dexterity. Now we're living with the consequences of those choices, right? Because that eight, for a paladin, totally reasonable to have that eight in intelligence or wisdom and still be a totally decent paladin. Mm -hmm. But it was chosen in dex. And you know what? If I'm the kind of character who re like rely and doesn't rely on armor because basically saying those who wear armor are too lazy to dodge, as Colby Calliston would say yeah. in the last of the Ranchai series. Uh, great book series, by the way. But that then they should have allotted some of the character resources to Dex, and they they didn't. So, I mean, that's a choice, and they're suffering the consequences. There's but, other options. Yeah. Like, that player could technically take a level of Barbarian. I, and very much, I, I had that thought as well, that they could use that to sort that they out. They could... Sure. Um, Take the protective uh, fighting stance or defensive. Defensive. Defensive to get the plus one to armor, no, armor class. class. So yeah. there's things that can be done and to mitigate. Yeah. And, and look, I totally respect uh, the GM here, Robert, for wanting to reward his player for 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 making role playing choices. But you know, first of all, if the player isn't really complaining about them, it's kind of a non issue. Right. Yeah. If, if if the player isn't saying, "Well, I made this choice. What are you going to give me for it?" Then you could just let it slide. Right, and, and it, when a player starts saying that kind of stuff to you anyway, you <laughs> maybe should give him an uppercut <laughs> for being demanding and whiny. Yeah. Uh, but no, like so, so it might not be that big of a deal to the player themselves. I personally, you know, I responded in the comments to this. I'm like, you can, you can, as the GM, compensate the encounters. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh well, I know I'm going to be wailing on this pallet and the, you know, all day long. Yeah. You know, so maybe I use, you know, maybe I water down my encounters a little bit or make them, you know better suited to the party. Right, right. When you're accounting for it, it, maybe when you look at encounters for suboptimal characters, like if you know that that character is built suboptimally, you can take a look when you're doing your encounter budgets and like, all right, what if I apply like a negative one to three levels when I'm calculating what is a easy to deadly encounter for this given character? So depending on how suboptimal that character is, a negative one to three when you're uh, you're accounting for their levels. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good way to go about it as well. i also seen other people make suggestions, which I'm not really fond of them. I'm not going to say they're bad, but of making, like, almost uh, changing and making all this new mechanical stuff based around armor where there's, like, there's a hide armor for every kind of, uh, every, every every category of armor class, you know, mm -hmm. heavy, medium, and light, right. you know, and they can just, you know, have the better heavy, uh, the better hide well, armor. Well, okay, but here's the thing. Now, eventually, it's, so it's known to the ancients, uh, Paladin, I believe, right? So... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, okay. But, so, but, but here's the thing. If you're talking about um, nature, natural materials, and you could look at it the same way that you would with druids, where like mm -hmm. their superior armors are tend to be made out of the shells and hides of like 
sturdier creatures, like the, a dragon scale armor, or mm -hmm. uh, maybe plates of belay, or something like that. So, like the fact that like it becomes this like rugged organic material, like a breastplate made out of belay, eventually. You know, it could be a thing that this character comes by. So but, that would be even, cool even thing. Still, that's still yeah. heavy. Like you're still talking about a heavy armor. Yeah. You know. But I, I think it's in part, and this is a discussion for for the GM and the player. But maybe it's a part about the aesthetics of being encased in metal versus like, oh, that's badass. Like that's the shell of a big hulking animal that mm -hmm. you slew. You know. So like, there's something like Conan esque about it and barbaric. So I could see that working, maybe. And that's a, you know, I, I don't know the player, so maybe I'm off base and they could discuss that. The other thing you could wind up doing is since he's making a role-playing choice is to offer some role-playing rewards, you know, give him, give him contacts, give him s something that is going to allow for more role-playing because he's he's made made the choice. It's not like he's like, oh, you know, he's not creating a character and saying, hey, look, can I swap this thing for that thing? He's making a choice without without saying, can I get something for it? Or also, um, what is the fighting feat from the Mariner on Earth Arcana? Like, it's not, I don't know that that's... The one that gives you, like, the swim speed and... Swim, it's a swim speed, climb speed, and it might be a bonus to armor class as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that might be a non-standard paladin uh, fighting, fighting style, style that he could get access because the character is so mobile for yeah. not wearing heavy armor. Ooh. So that's a very, because it's, it's kind of an imbalanced, like, thing... But in this instance, for somebody that's giving up so much, when you're talking about giving up upwards of five points of armor class to just take it on the chin all the time, then it's like a completely reasonable thing to make that an option for the character. But yeah, whatever that Mariner um, fighting style is, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Remember. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that. That was that was quite some time ago. Yeah. So so you could look at things like that, and I, I definitely like Ted's idea of. You know, offering up um, role playing rewards and and you know and maybe like his the the hides and leathers that he wear wears gives him you know a, advantage on charisma based checks when dealing with other Goliath tribes or even like maybe not even just Goliath tribes but mountain men and stuff because you know, you know they anything they, they that's close it. to the land sort yeah. of thing yeah they they kind of reckon you know recognize be druids. It. yeah druids druids rangers yeah anybody that's pretty uh, pretty in with I mean he's trip. essentially taking. That that druid hardship, yeah, the mentality. With, yeah, I mean, it, well, it's built into the class. They're they're restricted to those type of armors, and that's what he's choosing to take. Yeah. So, uh, I guess the other thing too is like, sh you know, should I give him something for heavy weapon pro or for the heavy armor proficiency? One, in order to give him something for heavy armor proficiency, you have to strip armor, pro strip that from the character class. So then he loses that option, right. which may or may not be something that the player is interested in because they may change their mind later. Right. And there is no reason why later on, like he gets introduced to more civilization, goes, wait a minute, <laughs> not that hand. tin can oh. looks like a big, it looks like a good idea. So Nowadays, sign yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you want to be careful about that. And, and if you do, re again, you could always replace one proficiency with any other proficiency, but all things being equal, it's not equal. No. Mm. Uh, you know, because I mean, short of the, the the stat bump, heavy armor proficiency is a feat. Yes. Yeah. So, you you could go down that road of, of feat swapping, um, but that's that's a, a tetchy road because then if you allow it once, players are going to start trying to nitpick their character apart so that you can get so they can get every little detail that they want. Oh, well, look at this! I start off with four feats because I'm not going to wear armor. I traded off all these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like the the things the different editions of games where they have um, disadvantages, and you're like, yeah, my character's blind one one eye, has asthma, an <laughs> allergy to wool, and uh, and is agoraphobic, but I have like eight feats at first level yeah. yeah yeah so you want to avoid that and it so with that though that's really just like you you as a DM have to know your players and know you know if they're gonna take start trying to take advantage of that or you know if they're no one's gonna really care that much you know and or you can also do it as the GM you can do it on the DL and just talk you know talk to the player right right so, yeah, uh, you know there there's some suggestions down in the comments below. I'm sure you will find a ton more suggestions. Uh, let us know uh, what you think there. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can hang out with us over on Facebook or catch us over on Snapchat. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.